1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. Thank you, Master. Let's speak it together. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. For whose glory? Ours. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Now think about that. They wouldn't have killed him. Why? Because then they would have tried to prevent him from fulfilling the will of God. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So the Spirit's always trying to bring us to the deeper understandings of the ways of God and understandings to the mysteries of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except for the spirit of God. Now we've received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God and not by ourselves. Eyes not able to see, ears not able to hear what God has for those that love him. It's only revealed by his spirit. That's so essential that why we have relationship in the spirit. Knowledge cannot always rescue you. Amen? But the Spirit of the Lord can always make a way of escape for you and rescue in multiple ways. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of the man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So the enemy's always trying to prevent us from receiving things from the Lord. In verse 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and verse 3. Let's speak it. But even if our gospel, which is the message of truth, is veiled, blinded, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. So the message of the truth of God Almighty, if it's not penetrating into the heart and mind and will of man, that individual falls into a place of perishing. Again, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe or follow, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. They are blinded by satanic forces, causing individuals not to see, not to hear, and not to obey or follow the Spirit and the Word of God. This causes what we call carnal perception, or what we call ears of corruption. Everyone say ears of corruption. And what happens is the individual can only hear things that have corruption instead of the things of God. I don't want to ask anyone if you've fallen into that place, because we all have at one time. Especially when you get in the flesh or offended, the only thing you hear is the voice of the corruption. You become, your ears become corrupted because you're too busy to try and defend yourself. 2 Timothy chapter 4. You know, think about how many times you got frustrated and You lied, but didn't know you lied until afterwards. Gosh, Lord, I spoke a lie. That's not what happened, or that's not how it should, or you know what I'm saying? Because the person's in the flesh. The flesh loves to lie or exaggerate or manipulate. And that is the influence of the enemy. In verse 1, 2, uh, 2 Timothy 4, verse 1. Let's speak it. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. In other words, decree the word. 
That's the only way out. Anytime you get into a circumstance, struggle, you, pre you speak the word. You got to sow your way out. Be ready in season and out. In other words, don't, don't keep your mouth shut. Open it and speak the word of God and decree. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, what I call ears of corruption. They will heap up for themselves teachers. These teachers are not individuals. Many of them are spirits. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables, lies, exaggerations, and false perceptions. He says, but you be watchful in all things, endure all afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry or your calling. Convince, rebuke, exhort with long suffering and teaching because they will not endure the sound doctrine of Jesus Christ. Or they will not follow the rules of engagement in warfare. They'll fall from spiritual boldness, taking heed to gossip, slander, offense, fear. Creating itching ears of corruption open to deceptive voices causing division and strife. Satan has mastered, has mastery over these individuals' minds and ears to listen to only corrupt things. Does everybody understand this? And many people have fallen into it. Look at what's going on in the world right now. What you see all over the world is ears of corruption. All over the world, even in the body of Christ, ears of corruption. Satan has mastered this. His purpose is to bring division, cause a house to fall. In Romans 10, 14. Romans 4, 14, or Romans 10, 14, sorry. Ten fourteen. let's speak it. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel or the word of God. They have not followed the word of God. They followed their emotions and their offenses, not the word of God. Look at what he says here. For they have not all followed the gospel. For Isaiah says what? Lord who has believed our report. So then faith comes by what? Hearing. So what the enemy wants to do is create ears of corruption. So the individual cannot hear. And then what happens? Faith is not built up. How many of you all know that only, uh, only all the word of word says all things work to the good. To the called and to according to the purposes, Right? How is that going to work if there's no faith? That's why you see the world in deray. It's a, it's a mess out there. No faith. The only faith they have is in themselves or in their works, but not on Christ, not on the Word. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing the voice and the words of God, but corruptive ears are under the spirit of stupor. Everyone say stupor. It's a friend of stupid. <laughs> Romans 11. Verse 7. What then? Oh, not then. Yeah, what, what then? Israel has not obtained what it seeks, but the elect have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Just as it is written, God has given them a what? Spirit of stupor, 
eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, to this very day. And David says, let their table become a snare and a trap, stumbling block, and a recompense to them. Let their eyes be darkened so that they do not see, and bow down their back always. God allows the spirit of stupor when an individual gets out of place, out of order. Uh, Hebrews 3. One of the things about the spirit of stupor is it brings confusion. Hebrews 3. Ears of corruption. You know, that's the enemy's ploy, man. In every area. To corrupt hearing. Hebrew 3, 7. Let's speak it. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. How many all know rebellion is witchcraft? In the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said they always go astray in their hearts and they have not known my ways. Now, what is your heart? It is the core of all your what? Desire. So they're always going astray in their desires. Desiring things out of God's time. Desiring things out of God's order. Desiring things that they're not supposed to be desiring. They have not known my ways. How many of y'all know God never interrupts himself? Amen. So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. All it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt, led by Moses? Now, Egypt was associated with the world, though. We've come out of the world. Amen? Now, with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? But those who did not obey. In other words, those who were rebellious. They can't rest. So we see that they could not enter because of what? Unbelief. They were not able to hear conviction. They were not able to receive rebuke or correction from God's voice. Resulting in a hardened heart and Years of corruption. 1 Peter 3. Is everybody there? Verse 8. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers, be tender-hearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him ref refrain his tongue from evil, his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do what? Who do evil. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are, not, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their hearts or threats, nor be troubled. But sanctify, everyone say sanctify, the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give in a defense for everyone who asks you reason for hope that is in you 
with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be what? Ashamed. His, it's pretty amazing to where his ears are open to the prayer of the obedient. But the face of the Lord, he's against all those who are disobedient. It is important that we become to this place where we understand, again, what we're hearing, what we're agreeing with, so that we're able to reject and refuse anything that will pull us out of position, out of order, or out of God's timing. It brings sin. It brings an open door to the enemy. In Acts 28, Acts 28, verse 26. Ears of corruption. Everybody there? He says, go to this people and say, hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of these people have what? Grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing. That's called ears of corruption. Their eyes, they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. Therefore, let it be known to you that salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will what? They will hear. He says, hearts have grown dull with self-centeredness and flawed perceptions of self. These, uh, these things are caused by the lack of repentance People are not willing to repent for the simple things. It says the little leaven leavens the what? Whole lump. They just stuff it under the rug or assume instead of repent. In Romans 10. Or they try to use the scripture, all things are going to work to the good. But let me tell you, what you sow is what you reap. Romans 10, verse 1. Is everybody there? Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to be established by their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes or to who follows. In other words, they had zeal for God according to the works, not according to relationships. Seeking to establish their own self-righteousness, not the righteousness of Christ. This is caused by ears of corruption, by how they eat these ears of corruption, things and how they perceive things, interpret things. It's always twisted. And Genesis 3. Hallelujah. Ears of corruption.
In verse 1, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? He slammed her with a question that would throw her off. He was challenging God. He wasn't challenging her. He was challenging God through her. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. So she responded correctly. But the first thing is that she allowed to be sucked into the first question. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then a serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. He put surely in there. He wanted to make sure. In other words, you shall not die at all. It's a lie. You've been lied to. The serpent said, you will not die, but be like God, right? For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So the serpent said, you're not going to die, man. You're going to live forever. But you're going to be like God. The serpent influenced <laughs> her free will to replace God's voice with the serpent's causing ears of corruption. And again, and self-centeredness, it was upon her now. She was looking more about her fulfillment. With no fight of resistance. Because the serpent reasoned, compromised, and weakened her will, taking her out of protective sanctification by just agreeing with it. Pulled her right out. 1 Thessalonians 4. Ears of corruption, an individual is never under sanctification. First Thess chapter four. Verse one. You know, it seems to always go back in who told you that? <laughs> who told you that? And where did it come from? And then stupor comes and goes, oh, I don't know. Was I supposed to search that out? Yes. And then why did you pass on that same information of corruption? Verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge you and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. Now listen, this is not just about sexual immorality. Immorality is also how a person thinks. How they see things sexually. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Sexual immorality. That each of you should... Know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in passion of lust. Does everybody see that? Like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother or opposite sex. In this matter, because the Lord is avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. 
For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? To holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God. In other words, he who rejects the saying rejects God, not man. But God who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Sanctification from, it, it, it's for lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Without obedience to the rules of engagement of the house of God, there can never be sanctification. Everyone follows the rules of the house of God. When you are falling out of the rules of the house of God, you're no longer sanctified. You're open the door for the enemy. And you will receive ears of corruption. And you'll become a gossiper yourself. Why? Because these are called rules of engagement. This is warfare. You cannot defeat your enemy. There can be no sanctification, no matter how much you pray, worship, of, or of your works, if you're in that condition. Does everybody understand? Obedience always leads to sanctification. Disobedience removes an individual from sanctification. In Galatians 6, And they will maintain ears of corruption. Galatians 6 verse 7. Famous scripture. Don't be stupid or stupid or deceived. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. <laughs> For whatever man sows, he's going to reap. For he who sows to his flesh, self-centeredness, selfishness, will reap, well, what? Will reap corruption. You think they're to become released of corrupt, ears of corruption? Yes. But he who sows to the Spirit will the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not what? Lose heart. So to the flesh of rebellion, self-seeking, gossip, covenant breaking, you reap the ears of corruption, making it harder to hear and discern. Making it harder to what? Hear and discern. Galatians 3. Is everybody okay? Are you understanding this? Again, we've all fallen into this trap. But you shouldn't be in it. <laughs> Amen? You may touch it, but you should never, never stay in it. If you do, things are going to get worse. And the enemy is just preparing a trap. It may not seem like it's going to happen now. Every, anybody ever gone fishing? You know what happens when you go bass fishing, largemouth bass? They first take a, a, a little fish, and they, it's a bait. It goes in its mouth, and the thing books. But the person that's fishing doesn't pull it yet. He waits. Because he knows if he pulls it, he'll pull that, the bait right out of its mouth. It's a big enough bass. So he waits till he, he swallows it. Then, poof, he pulls it. Well, see, that's how the devil operates. He waits till everything's going good. Family restored. Good business. This, that, whatever. Money in the bank. And that person doesn't even know that they're out of order. Because everything's being, they're being blessed. Heck, I'm being blessed. How can I be out of order? Stupid. Forgot that you sowed in the flesh and you're reaping corruption. You do not know when the enemy is going to pull the hook. But when he does, shame not only comes you, but it ripples effect all the way down to others. Hello? I see it happen all the time. Oh, verse 1. Oh, foolish Galatians. 
Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the what? Hearing of faith. Are you so foolish? Here we go. Having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? What happened to them? They sowed in the flesh and reaped what? Ears of corruption. Have you suffered so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain, therefore he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by your works? Or the hearing of faith, just as Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him for what? Righteousness. Therefore, know that only those who are of the faith are sons of Abraham. Hallelujah. Bewitched. They were bewitched. They were tricked. Witchcraft, rebellion, not able to stand on the truth, attempting to make self, self perfect in the flesh by making others look bad. Caused by ears of what? Corruption. 2 Timothy 2. They fall into the blame game. <laughs> you said, he said. You did, he did. You should have and you shouldn't have. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Let's speak it. You therefore, my son, be what? Strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who are able to teach others also. In other words, who are able to be witnesses to others, who are able to be examples to others with good attitude, good motives, good words. Not backing the things that are corrupt, but backing the things that are righteous. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is, cr he is not crowned unless he what? Competes according to the rules of the house of God. Does everybody see that? Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all of these things. You must compete according to the rules of the house of God and avoid emotional entanglements. Amen? Why? Because it will establish errors of what? Corruption. That's why some people can never get free. They stay bound. Psalm 1. Not someone, Psalm 1. And we're going to close here. Praise God. Oh, happy days. Everybody there? Everyone say blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Ooh, snap it. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now hold on a second. So cursed is the man who walks in the counsel of the ungodly, right? Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Gossip. But as delight in the truth and the law of the Lord, and in the law he meditates. They, not, in other words, he considers everything that he's doing so that he does things according to what God says in the word of God. Approaching a brother in offense, how to handle oneself, how to keep sanctified, not going around gossiping, doing assumption, 
but he delights himself in knowing what the Word of God says to try and not make any more mistakes than what he already has. Verse 3, what does it say? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water. Now wait, this is an individual that accepted counsel, received it, practiced it, and put it into purpose. This is what happens to them. They shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water that brings forth its fruit in season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does shall what? Prosper. Why? Because it's the counsel of the Lord. How many of y'all want to accept counsel of the Lord? Follow it and do it. But what happens when you reject it? Here it is. The ungodly are not so. Those are rejected. But are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment or the reward. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. In other words, they're going to be dry. No matter how much worship, no matter how much prayer, until they repent and turn. Verse 6, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The ungodly is rebellious. Rejecting counsel by not fulfilling the Lord's counsel results in ears of corruption and a long-distance relationship. What happens is what we call a poor man's purse. Money just goes through. They can never, never gets anywhere. Poor man's purse, never able to advance or prosper, being unstable, tossed to and fro by every voice of the stranger of deception. Why? Because they've established ears of corruption. But those that submit to God's house rules are able to resist the devil's influence of lust and emotional attacks because their ears are open to the voice of the Lord and they are shut to the voice of the stranger. Again, we see this all over, everywhere, globally. People are being taken out left and right. Many forgot what God has done for them. Where God has brought them from. You know, there's a saying, Jesus said, He is not sin, cast the first stone. We must look at that always. Amen? Or we'll fall into ears of corruption. Is it time to stand strong in the Lord? Be bold? That's what the word says. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And be an eyewitness of God's goodness. And what he's done in your life and what he can do through your life. People want to, they don't want to hear no more. They want to see. Does everybody get that? They don't want to hear. They want to see. There's a lot of mouths going, but not a lot of fruit. People want to see Christ's character. Amen? You can't talk to someone unless they see Christ's character in you. <laughs> if you try to talk about Christ and you're acting like a moron, and a gossiper and all kinds of stuff. Nobody wants to hear it. Amen? They want to see the character of Christ expressed. It's time to bold up, stand up, and do what's right before God. Amen? Praise God. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you for your mercies and grace and faithfulness and your word that has been imparted into us, Lord. Let it grow and bear fruit for your glory. And Lord, if... We have done anything and brought forth ears of corruption, Lord. Restore them. Restore all of us, Lord, that have picked up any seeds that have caused areas of corruption, self-centeredness, or caused us uh, to release our free will into the hands of the enemy and move out of order in any way whatsoever. So, Holy Spirit, we just submit it all to you. Guide us, protect us, and lead us so that people will see Christ in us before they see, hear Christ in us, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Stay dressed and be blessed with you.